All right, so we're going to combine a couple of my favorite topics into hopefully one coherent talk. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. So one of the things I've really been playing with lately is this micro Python on an ESP8266. What that means is Python running on a really tiny device with not a lot of memory in it that I can bet into some application, like in my case, I have a flashing marquee sign or something else. And I like the Python thing because it's pretty easy to program. It's not awesome for super real time IOT stuff where I'm doing a walking robot or something, although somebody will prove me wrong. But generally, it's great for a lot of the sensor uh, read and send to the cloud or uh, send controls, right? So what I've got is a web server on the IOT device and you can post, I mean, run call get calls with URL query parameters, and that'll cause the devices on there to actually uh, give you, uh, to take whatever action. So we have a web server that has control of some digital IO pins and it has control of some servos. You can change their position all through the web server. And to be honest, it's kind of a pain to edit all the HTML and stuff and keep pushing it down to the web server. Uh, this device is small enough. You can't mount it as a hard drive and you can't make it look like a network device. So you end up copying files down over the USB connection using our shell, no big deal. Uh, but what I wanted to show is I actually, uh, dependency injection is the notion that none of your, your components have everything they need injected into them at creation time or well a lot of times at creation time we'll just say creation time and that way they don't have to go out and create something so originally when i wrote this uh the web server part of this you passed it the pin numbers on the iot device and where what pins the servers were on the numbers and it newed up all the pins for you and it turned out uh, that that violates this kind of you know uh inversion of control thing so what i wanted to do was create the pin object, create the servo objects, pass them into the server. Why is that cool? Because it means now I can actually test this web server on my laptop with fake pins, right? Because at what the web server, when you do dependency injection and version of control, the item, the, the class that you're working with, it doesn't know where the things came from. As long as they implement an API, it doesn't really care and that's the way it should be. So this inversion of control, the configuration, the things are already passed in ready to use and we'll show a little example of that. So the reason this is kind of cool, uh, you know what, we'll do this. Okay, the reason this is kind of cool is I actually, so let's look at what happens on the ESP8266, right? There's a main PY pro Python program. It instantiates all the pin objects it instantiates all the servo objects, then it creates the web server, instantiates it, initializes it, I guess some people call it, and it passes in the array of pins and the array of servo objects, not the numbers, but the actual objects. That means I can use any class I want as long as it implements a certain API. And then when I execute the web server, it just runs its uh, get checking and then it takes all the operations it's gonna do against those pin and servo uh, objects that were passed in and or functions depending on how you do it and then it goes and generates an html response why is that cool because it turns out on my developer machine i actually created a fake pin class and a fake servo class um, that implement the a same api as the pin in the servo the parts that we need and that lets me actually run this web server on my laptop and hit it from a browser to play with the HTML and all that part. And then I download it to the IoT device and I look at the memory utilization, make sure I didn't do anything stupid again. Uh, so in this case, instead of main.py, we have web server test Python. It instantiates a fake, all the fake pins that are required. It instantiates all the fake servos. It initializes the same web server code with zero code change in it with those fakes and then it runs it on my laptop and now I can actually hit the same web service in both places, right? So let me close this and see what we're doing. So we'll come down here, right? So the, the reason this works is because that web server, all its dependencies are injected. So in this case, um, we actually pass in the control pins, the digital pins already created. These are pin objects, not just pin numbers. The labels for those pins, whether they're inverted or not, the servo pins, what pins are we gonna run on ser servos on? Not the pin numbers, but the servo API objects. And that way we can pass in fake servos. We could pass in, um, we could pass in remote servos that are actually proxies. Like, we can do whatever we want. And then it, I have the static message area at the bottom. And so basically on the end of bottom of every page, it puts a footnote. That could be copyright, it could be something else. I'll show you in a couple minutes. Um, and then basically, all we do is we init this thing and then we call a method on it and it's not that method, so hold on. 
And through the magic of recording, I just changed that, right? So we initialize this with all the pins and the control objects that it needs, and that lets us do real ones or mock ones, or it lets us do any kind we want as long as they implement the API. And then we just call run server on this. See how I did that? I changed it to run server because that was the only method that was important in here. So what does the pin, the page look like that we're going to do with this? I don't think this is going to be very big, but basically it says ESP8266. I should probably make that programmable. And you've configured the output pins, in this case, pin 2 and pin 16, which are LED lights on the ESP8266 box I've got. And I've set up one servo that you can program to be 090 and 180 degrees. This is a demo. Don't get all weird with me. And then at the bottom, it reads the raw pin state for any of the pins we tell it about. So this web server actually uses uh, I.O. pins in two places, top and bottom, for control and for reading, and it has a set of servo pins, uh, non-digital I.O. pins that are set up for pulse width modulation for servos. And I can, you can see, you probably can't see it, but basically this is on localhost, right? And so that means I can actually run this, I ran this server on localhost, even though it's targeted for um, an IoT device, right? And that lets me not have to keep downloading it there and rebooting the device or other weird stuff. So if we look at this, right, this is the IoT usage pattern. So the, we knew up the web server, we initialize it with all the machine pins that we're gonna do for IO, the labels on those pins, whether they're inverted or not, the servo object, right? So before we did machine pins for digital IO, I have a server a servo API that is a wrapper for the pin. I didn't want the web server to have to know how to wrap the, to have a pin and then know which servo class it's going to use. That's just a bad idea because if I want to change that for, as I'm going to do here, for testing or to actually run it somewhere else, then this lets me, as long as it implements that API, we're good. So basically this web server is initialized with all of these objects. And in this case on the IoT device, we actually initialize it with the IP address for where it joined my network and for the access point that it stood up by itself. And uh, the code for this is actually on this GitHub repo I pointed out. So this is how we initialize this web server in the IoT case. It turns out if we're going to run it on the dev machine, I'm just going to fake the pins. I don't have any IO pins. If this was an old device, I probably could have built pins on the parallel port. If you don't know what a parallel port is, uh, I aged myself there. Sorry about that. Uh, so basically, we knew up some fake pins here, and we knew up some fake servo pins, and these implement the same APIs as the ones that were on the IoT device. And then we just knew up this web server without pins, out labels, is it inverted, servo pins, servo labels, and a list of all the pins that are set up as digital out, and then a message, right? And so you can see here we basically did one, two, we did three for the output pins, two for the servo, one for any of the pins we want the status of in the message. We did the same thing here, three for the output pins, two for the servo pins, one for any of the pins whose status we want to display in a message, and we have the same run server call. Right, so these two are identical. It's just, the only thing that's different is we've passed in a different set of pin classes, right? And so if we look at that, it turns out that the only thing we needed to do, we didn't really need a pin class, we just need a class that implements these two methods. A two string, because it turns out we two string this in the print statement somewhere, and then the pin, because we didn't actually have to create it, right? They passed into the server, into the web service already created, all we needed to do was get the I.O. value re and set the I.O. value. So that's actually this value Python method. If you pass in, whenever you uh, pass in a value, it sets it and it returns the value that it thinks is currently on the pin as the return. So that's what the I.O. pin actually does, machine.io pin on the IoT device. So all I did was a fake version of this and this will get and set a value and the pin sets the default pin mode the same. I didn't implement the entire API because why bother? I only need what the web server actually implements. I could have done this with interfaces, but I didn't because I was because there's just not that much room on the IoT device. And then on the servo, it's the exact same thing. This is the initializer for the fake servo. It actually matches the real servo, even though we don't care about like any of the microsecond stepping or the max and min. So basically all this fake servo does, it has the two string support for printing debug output. And it turns out it has a right milliseconds and a right angle. And so you can set the angle of the servo and you can or you can set how many microseconds uh, it's gonna run. And that's the pulse width modulation. And so it was only these three methods from the, from the real servo class that, well, these two methods that I really needed and I did the two string to make the debugging. So the idea here, right, 
is dependency injection and aversion control reduces the coupling of your working classes because they no longer are responsible for the construction of their dependencies. Instead, you pass those in. That lets you pass in different dependencies based on the environment. In my case, I was able to pass in real pins on an ESP8266 or any other IoT board, and I was able to pass in fake pins on my laptop that still let me test. I actually am playing with, can I get some USB device that just has pins on it that I could set control and then I could actually have real pins anyway or laptop IO if I could find a parallel board to plug in or an old fidget board or something anyway so that's the point I just wanted to say the goal here go back to this is we inst if we're gonna run something like a web server we instantiate all the resources it needs all its configuration we instantiate that and then pass in in this case, the pin arrays and the servo arrays, so it knew which one it needed. And then when I execute, it runs with those. And that way, I can do the same thing in my test jig that I did on my device, or I could do my same thing in any other environment. And there is zero code difference in the web server here for running it on my laptop and running it on my IoT device. So I hope that's useful. Go back out to the repo for this. Don't, let me go to the bottom. Nope, it's at the top. It's well, you know what? Go here. GitHub Premium Soft ESP8826 micro, micro Python, and you will find uh, all the example classes that back this video. Have a great day.